Hello and welcome to this section of the TI-89 Calculator Tutor. And in this section we're going to cover the topic of integration. So in the last section we learned how to take derivatives of functions and in this section we'll learn how to integrate functions. And it turns out that just like with many other things in this calculator, uh, it's easy to do once you know how to do it. And the uh, calculator has some pretty tremendous features here as well. So let's go up to the calculus menu, F3. Just to, uh, in the last section we talked about differentiating a function, so we'll just go down to integrating a function. And you'll see that the process is quite simple. When you put that guy on the command line, you'll see an integral symbol with an open parenthesis. Now it's up to you to type in the function that you'd like to integrate, obviously. So uh, what you can use is any, you can use any variable that you want as your independent variable, but let's go ahead and talk about x for now. So let's just do something really simple that everyone knows how to integrate if you're taking calculus x, uh, let's do x squared. All right, now when you do an integral, just like when you do a derivative, you always need to specify what variable you are integrating with respect to. So put a comma x and close the parentheses. Now this is the form of every integral that you'll type in. Integral of whatever it is you're integrating, x squared, with respect to x. Now you'll understand why the x is really important later. You might look at this and say, well, it's x squared. It's the only variable. Why, why do we have to type that? Well, it's a computer, you have to tell it what to integrate with respect to. So just get in the habit of doing it, just like the derivatives. So hit enter, it thinks for a second, and it pops out the, uh, the, uh, the integral here, uh, 1 3rd x cubed, or x cubed over 3, depending on how you like to look at it. So doing basic integration is really just as simple as that, and it knows all of the rules of integration. It uses techniques that, that are maybe even more cumbersome for you to use by hand. So if we go and add to this uh, sine of x, then what we're going to have is two terms. We have x squared plus sine x right here. So what we're going to do is integrate each term separately. That's just the rules of calculus, and that's what the calculator will do. And that's what we get. We get the 1 3rd x cubed, which is what we got when we just integrated the x squared. Integrating the sine gives us negative cosine. Now one important thing to note is the calculator doesn't, uh, you know, when you take a calculus class, you're always taught to do the integral and then put plus a constant at the end, any old arbitrary constant, plus c in other words. The calculator's not going to do that. It's, um, it's hard to explain and, and to know exactly why they programmed it, but just know for yourself that the rules of calculus always tell you that when you do an integral like this, you always have to put plus c at the end, uh, but the calculator's not going to show you that, so just be aware of that. Now, one thing I will show you is you don't have to integrate uh, a function of x. Uh, much like the derivative function, if I change this to y, just for comparison purposes, we'll leave everything else the same, and I'll put y here, and of course I'll be integrating with respect to y, and I hit enter, then I'm going to get exactly the same answer just in terms of y. Now this is kind of useful because depending on the function that you have, your book or, or whatever your homework problem is, you might have, it might be easier to use a different variable, especially if you have a multivariable function. The easiest thing I can think of here is what if you're going to uh, integrate something like cosine of theta. Remember theta is in green right above here. So I could put theta here and close that cosine off. And of course if I'm integrating over theta, I've got to, to explicitly put comma theta there. And I hit enter, you get sine theta. So just know that you can integrate with respect to whatever variable you want. You can write your function in terms of whatever variable you want. You just need to make sure to put, to put it in place. Now notice that when you type in the command, you put integral cosine theta comma theta. This is the vari variable you're integrating over. When you hit enter and it puts, it interprets what you type onto the command line, it changes it a little bit. It puts integral cosine theta d theta, which is what you would see in a textbook. So you, there, is no, there is no keyboard key to put the d here in d theta. You just need to type it in uh, integrand comma theta. All right. Now one thing I will show you really quickly is we've been getting to the integrate command by going into F3 calculus menu, but it's actually directly on your keyboard also. If you look right above the number 7, uh, there's a second function blue key for uh, integral, just like there's a derivative key right above 8. So you can actually take derivatives and integrals right on your keyboard. So to demonstrate that, do second function 7, and it does exactly the same thing. It just sticks the integral sign on the stack, so you could do you know, tangent of y comma y. And I put too many parentheses in there, so I'll take that out. And then go ahead and close your guy off, and then it's going to take the uh, integral of tangent y. 
Now, the other thing is to keep in mind that, you know, the calculator knows it has lots and lots of a, basically a built-in table of integrals to help it. It has lots of identities that it knows to help it do these integrals. So it's pretty darn powerful. So if you tried to do something like, so let's go ahead and put something a little bit more complicated on the stack just to kind of test things out a little bit. So we'll put uh, sine of x to the power of 4, let's say. And we'll multiply that by, let's say, cosine of x. All right, and we'll do comma x. We'll close it off just to show you how efficient and how, how cool this calculator is. So you stick that guy in there, something that you might have to take a little minute to think about how to do, and it spits out the answer almost immediately. Uh, so it's got identities in there. It's got a table of integrals to help it out in simplifying. It's got all the rules of algebra. So it's going to be able to do some of these things. If the calculator is not able to, to figure out what the integral of something is, then it'll just tell you that by putting it right back on the stack. So let's, let's do that. Let me change this. Uh, instead of cosine x, we'll just make it really, really difficult. Like uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up in a natural log. Put a natural log there and we'll close the other half of the cosine off in a natural log. So what we have is sine to the power of 4 times natural log of cosine x. That's pretty complicated. So we'll hit enter. It thinks for a long time. Notice the busy signals there telling you thinking, thinking. If it goes more than a couple seconds, chances are it's not going to be able to handle the integral. So we'll just wait for it here and see what happens. Now look what we have. We typed in this long integral and it spit out the integral right back at us. So it, it basically tried. It tried to simplify. It tried to do substitution. It tried to do all the tricks that it knows and it went down the list and it couldn't figure out how to simplify it. So it just gave us the integral back in our face. So that's really, really important for you to know. All right. Now let me show you really quickly what do you have, what do you do if you have a function of two variables. This is not something you get too much into calculus one, but certainly when you get into calculus two and beyond, you'll, you'll get into this. So we'll go ahead and stick an integral on the stack. What if you had a function like, um, instead of x squared, what about y times x squared? So here I have two variables in my function. One of them is y and one of them is x. So just like in all the other cases, I have to tell the calculator what variable to integrate over. So I'm integrating, let's just say, over x this time. So this is going to behave just like the partial derivatives we talked about in the previous section. So if I give comma x and I've got two variables, then what I'm going to do is integrate uh, over x squared, or I'm going to integrate x squared, but I'm going to pr pretend that y is just a constant. So it might as well be 2, or might as well be 5. So when I hit enter, the calculator is going to give me 1 third x cubed, and the y is going to sit right out front just as if it were just another number. So think of it as if you were integrating 2x squared, um, y being 2, let's just say. Then that would be exactly the same thing. The 2 would come out of the integral, you would integrate the uh, x squared getting this guy. So this is the answer that you would expect. So y is held constant in that case. Now if I go and do the exact same integral, same thing I'm typing in, but instead of integrating over x, I integrate over y, then I'm going to be integrating this guy, pretending that this whole thing is just a constant. So when I do that, the answer I'm going to get uh, is going to be this guy because what it, pretend that x squared is just a number. So if it's just a number, it's going to be pulled out of the integral Right? So that's why it's just sitting here. What is the integral of y? Integral of y is just 1 half y squared, which is what we have left over here. So when you have a function of more than one variable, you need to specify the, the variable that you're integrating over, and every, all other variables are going to be held constant. And that works for if you have uh, variable z in there, or variable t in there, or whatever. It's just everything else other than what you're integrating over is held constant, just like the partial derivatives. All right, there's one more thing I would like to show you, which is incredibly important. You'll use it all the time. So let's go ahead and put an integral on the stack. What if you what if you need to do a definite integral? Up till this point, we've been doing integration, indefinite integration, which is sort of the symbolic integration. But what if we want to integrate, let's say, x squared over x, but we want to integrate it from 0 to 5, you know, all on the x-axis? All you need to do is specify the limits of integration. So you do the integrand, and then you do the variable that you're integrating over, just like we've been doing. Then you put comma 0, and then you put comma 5. And the calculator knows that if you put more commas after the variable you're integrating over, that these are the limits of integration. And it just knows that. It's syntax. So when we go ahead and hit Enter, then it's going to actually write it in a pretty, you know, nice pretty format. Integral 0 to 5 x squared dx. It takes the integral. It gets one third, you know, one third uh, x cubed as the integral, and then it evaluates the limits of integration and puts it in terms of a number. 
Now, in this case, I get 125 over 3. That's because I've got the calculators in the mode menu set up to try to preserve fractions as much as I can. If you have that turned off in the mode menu, then you're just going to get a decimal here. If you, if you get sick of uh, looking at these guys, then you can always just hit green and then this squiggly equals and it's going to convert that to a decimal for you. So the answer to this integral is 41.6667. Now let me tell you, this is really useful for you because on a test, a lot of times, especially a calculus one test, you're calculating these definite integrals and uh, the calculator might not be able to do some of these symbolic integrals, you know, these indefinite integrals because it may not know how to simplify it but it should always be able to spit back a definite integral answer at you because it's really doing a numerical calculation. It's finding the area under the curve using, uh, using other techniques that I don't need to go into here, but it should be able to always give you an answer. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and stress it out a little bit. Let's do natural log of x and let's square that and let's add to that sine of x, put too many parentheses, just like always, sine of x, times cosine of x times tangent of x. So we put a pretty long deal in here. So now we have this really lengthy integral typed in, you know, what we want to integrate over. So let's integrate over x and let's do it from, uh, let's do from x is equal to one to x is equal to seven, let's say. And actually I made a mistake there. So we need to put a comma, x is equal to one to x is equal to seven and close the parentheses. So we're integrating this really lengthy function that it would be really difficult to do by hand and it'll also be difficult for this calculator to do symbolically. And we're integrating from x is equal to 1 to 7. Even for really complicated functions, it should be able to do numeric integration, definite integration for you, because it uses different numerical techniques to get the answer. So it's busy, not too long, and it spits an answer. Now here we got negative sine of 7, cosine 7. Notice that these are just numbers. We go and look at the rest of this. 7 times natural log 7 squared, and we've got all these other things here toward the end. So we've got a really, really lengthy answer, but everything in here is just a number. Notice how it tries to keep everything exact for us. We have sine of 1, cosine of 1. It doesn't truncate any decimals, and that's because of the modes that we have the calculator set in. Uh, but you can easily just stick this guy on the stack, hit green, uh, and then squiggly equals, and it's going to turn that into 14.24. So this giant integral that we typed in, which notice it, it, prints it, it prints it out in a nice pretty way, integral of 1 to 7, natural log squared plus sine times cosine uh, times tangent dx, and the answer to that long integral is 14.24. So my advice to you is two things, and this is actually really important because this is a great way to use the calculator. If you're on the test and you have a definite integral that has limits of integration, then calculate by hand and then definitely go in the calculator and just put the limits of integration in and get the answer and check it definitely. If you're doing an indefinite integral, which means there's no limits of integration, this is the first kind of integral we were doing here in this section, then try to integrate it in your calculator. If it can integrate it, then great, you've checked your answer. If the calculator is not able to, if it's too complicated and it just spits the integral back in your face, then uh, calculate a definite integral on your calculator of the same function from like 0 to 5. It doesn't matter. Do anything you want. And then calculate it by hand based on the answer that you got. So if your integral was uh, x cubed, to pick, an, pick, to pick an easy one, x cubed, indefinite integral, then go and, and the calculator, let's say, can't actually integrate that function because it's too complicated. In real life it could, but if it were a much more complicated function, then go ahead and do a definite integral of, from like 0 to 5 of that guy. Get an answer, a number answer. And then go back to your paper and take the answer that you calculated and do a definite integral over the same limit, 0 to 5. And you should be able to calculate a decimal on your, on your paper based on the answer that you got. And then you'll get a decimal in the calculator based on, this, on the same numerical technique. And if they match, then it means that you got the, same, uh, the correct answer for the integral. A little complicated to say, but bottom line, as I'm saying, is that even if the calculator um, isn't able to do a symbolic integration, an indefinite integration, and just spits the integral back in your face. If you're just trying to check your work, there are ways to do it uh, indirectly. So do that if you have to. That's basically it. It's very easy to do integration in the TI-89. Stick the integrate guy on the stack, uh, put the function in, the, the uh, variable that you're integrating over, nine times out of ten it'll spit out the answer, it'll be all beautiful for you, and you'll be able to check your work. If you need to do definite integration, just stick those limits of integration after it, and it'll calculate a numerical technique 
very, very rarely it would not be able to return an answer for a definite integral because it's doing numerical. It's actually finding the area under the curve and it's kind of like graphing it, but it's not really showing it to you. It's actually calculating the area under that curve to be able to calculate those answers. I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. Go ahead and, and play around with this. Doing your, your integration techniques and checking your work on exam is just going to save you so much time. So make sure you understand. Pick a few functions out of the air and uh, play with this uh, function of your calculator.